Hello everyone and welcome to today's reading. I hope that all is well. If you're new here, I am the Apocrypha and it is a pleasure to meet you. I hope you'll consider sticking around, joining this whole family that we have going on here. I just saw that. <laughs> if you're returning, welcome back, soul family. I love you guys. Thanks. All right. So, as always, information, decks, and disclaimers will be in the description box. I am offering personal readings at this time. If you're interested, please contact me. Um, and then I can go ahead and share that information with you. I'm just going to do whatever comes out today. How about that? <laughs> I'll be using my dragon deck today and also an oracle deck that also has dragons. Okay, so the first card that we have is Sire of Cups. The sire in these or in this deck are associated with the king. So this is the king of cups. I heard like father, like son. I heard emotional unav unavailability. This little dragon here is looking into this huge chalice, but from our perspective, this chalice looks empty. The father dragon is stoic, wings wide open, but with this little dragon here, I don't think you'll be able to see the face. I feel like this little dragon is looking for something more. I'm not saying whether this father was positive or negative. I'm just saying this little dragon is perhaps looking for love. I feel different messages, perhaps looking for love that the father did not give to this dragon. Seeking external validation or external love. Trying to understand the self more deeply. Trying to get a hold of their emotions trying to become more emotionally stable themselves, perhaps like the father, depending on which situation you may be. This doesn't have to be a, fa a father figure necessarily, but as this is the king of cups, that is what I'm getting. Take it as it resonates. It could be a mother and just have been this card to show that imagery. It's like, even though the father dragon is looking straight, and it's kind of hard to read the expression, the tail is coiled up around this chalice. This one is the father dragon chalice, uh, tail I mean. And then the baby dragon's tail. So perhaps for somebody out there, trigger warning, etc. Perhaps there's something that has to do with this father figure or this masculine figure. 
that may have caused emotional avoidance, emotional... I heard emotional disability, but that's not, like, emotional avoidance, a lack of understanding how to be emotionally stable because of the way that this father figure perhaps treated this baby dragon. I feel like this message is more specific for somebody who has perhaps not had the strongest bond with their father or the masculine figure, masculine authoritative figure in their life. Hmm. Let's see, I'm feeling called to pull the top card. We have the Knight of Cups. In this card, there's like a uh, walrus or a seal. It's a seal inside the chalice. And then there's a polar bear in the distance. Perhaps for some of you, there's this distress when it comes to understanding your emotions and being able to convey your emotions. These dragons are blue, which in this deck, the blue dragons symbolize cups. But I'm feeling now this sense of the throat chakra because the throat chakra is also associated with blue. So I'm seeing perhaps because of this father figure, it might be very difficult to convey how you feel out of fear of disapproving, like this father figure being disapproving or perhaps this father talking down on, on you. I'm getting like bad scenarios in my head that I don't feel I need to mention. If it's something you're going through, then you're already going to know what I'm talking about. It's like learning to heal yourself despite what despite your upbringing learning to communicate in healthy and balanced ways despite how you have been raised to believe or despite what society says men should or shouldn't do is bullshit human beings have feelings Human beings deserve to express those feelings in healthy and balanced ways. Whether you're male or female or whatever, it doesn't matter. You deserve to express yourself. Oh. I just, I was shuffling and then something told me like stop and pick the card in the top. And I was literally just saying that you need to express yourself. The crazy thing here, not only that, but I actually literally just got a message from somebody who has also experienced this kind of energy. Um, so I feel like that might be a confirmation for somebody. This is the Ace of Swords. 
swords symbolize thoughts, actions, words, communication. The Ace of Swords is saying to speak your truth, to stand in your power, to say how you feel. Sometimes what we have to say might not be what certain people want to hear, but sometimes it just has to be said anyway. Sometimes, excuse me, there's also situations where you might not be able to express how you feel or say what's on your mind because of things that people might do, might retaliate, might get really bad. I was mentioning I saw 1133 I was mentioning at the beginning with this first card before any of the other cards came out that perhaps this little baby dragon is looking for love that this father figure did not give them I feel like this is saying if this is your situation Give yourself the love that you are seeking. And this is easier said than done. And it may be very difficult. We need to learn to love ourselves. And I know a lot of people hate hearing that, but it's the truth. If there's certain things that you don't like, that doesn't mean that you have to force yourself to love it. It just means that you have to learn to accept it for what it is. And either do something about it if possible, make changes if need be, or learn to embrace it for what it is. If you cannot change it or if you are not willing to change it, I literally just saw 13. 13 is the death card, which symbolizes change and transformation, which is a Scorpio card as well. If you need to make changes in your life, then make those changes. It's very difficult when we seek validation from our parents or from authority or from teachers or from bosses or from whoever, whatever, a significant other or whatever the case is, it's saying that you need to hold this love for yourself. If you wouldn't let anybody talk to you in a certain way or disrespect you or treat you less as less than or take advantage of you or something like that then why would you do that to yourself if you don't let people talk to you in nasty mean ways then why are you talking to yourself in nasty mean ways this is saying The love that you are seeking is right in front of you. The love that you are seeking should come from yourself. In any situation that I have known, whether it is my own personal experience or from people that I know or things that I have heard, is true. Like, how can you 
love somebody else if you don't really love yourself. Again, I know like a lot of people hate hearing that, but after a while of sitting with it and going through so many experiences and you know being used and manipulated and taken advantage of and walked all over and and people taking you for granted and everything you really learn that it's true anyone can just come and go like that and if you put all your eggs in that one basket then you're left with no food What I feel like this is kind of saying here is to make sure that you're giving yourself the love that you seek from other people. Validate your own self. Pat yourself on the back. Be proud of yourself for how far you have come, for how much you have achieved, or for how much you have made positive changes in your life. Learn to tap into, especially if you're masculine watching this, whether you're male or female, learn to tap into that feminine side that you have. We all have both. And it's important to learn to tap into both in balanced, healthy ways. So what does that mean? Be more compassionate with yourself. Love yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be there for yourself. The kind of love and compassion that you seek from other people, do that for you. Put yourself first. Not in a selfish, stingy way, but in a way where you got to take care of yourself first. It's not a bad thing. How can you share and extend your energy? Oh, I felt that. Scars. This is a pretty heavy energy that I'm feeling. And I <laughs> I think for a moment when I was shuffling, I saw that card. I just saw like this big purple dragon, but I didn't really focus on it. And then this one came out. Perhaps some of you are emotionally unavailable struggle to convey how you feel emotionally for all of the things that you've experienced whether it was through exes or family members or for some of you perhaps a father figure whether a blood father a stepfather or some kind of masculine energy trigger warning again they may have been abusive to say the very least physically men mentally emotionally verbally in like any way that you can think of I feel like some of you are struggling when it comes to love because of this father figure in your life who never really gave that to you in healthy, balanced ways. And now you are scarred, perhaps even physically. Is that the... Oh, wow. 
okay so we have the water chalice which is like the ace of cups or it's just the cups energy and behind that we have independence it's very fiery energy and I feel like this card on the top wanted to come out courage okay underneath we have new world all right Ooh, under the deck we have the moon the moon is about going within it is about emotions it is about understanding the depths of who you are looking in the mirror okay so here we are again talking about this chalice the cups this is water energy cups are water energy and we had pretty much the water energy in this deck and it's interesting too because something that I was going to mention about this dragon is like kind of looking in as if it were scrying and then we have this water here making me think of somebody scrying through water if you have wanted to scry then perhaps that is a confirmation for you to give it a try and do so water I feel like for some of you water is very healing for some of you maybe you feel very much at peace even if this figure is at home when you're alone in the shower I feel like that's where you have your peace but also that's where your emotions come out where people can't really hear you cry because of I was gonna say because of the rain but because of the uh, the water where if your eyes are red or if your face is wet it means nothing because you were in the water who could tell the difference you need to feel your own cup you need to give that to yourself hopefully this person comes around maybe they've apologized for what they did maybe they haven't but whether they have or have not you need to be there for yourself and give this to yourself and I feel like you guys have to some degree you have you have had to learn to be independent perhaps some of you have held on to this passion this fire within you so deeply and personally away from the world or away from other people so that they don't take it from you it's like this dragon's protecting this crystal with all of its might it's a crystal cave you have learned to be more independent because of this person because you had to there were aspects of how this person may have treated you that have helped you learn to be independent but now for some of you I feel like you're so independent because of the scars that you have that you're even perhaps very what's the word like kind of struggle with love situations now you may feel like it's too hard to express yourself or 
too hard to feel into your emotions because of all the scars and all the trauma that you have experienced you've learned to be very independent but now it's hard for you to let anybody in you're trying to have courage and if not then this is saying to have courage to follow your heart and to to work with those that you trust Give yourself love and validation. Believe in yourself and see how far you have come. The New World card is saying to embrace new possibilities, embrace change. If you need to move and you want to move and you're able to, then do it. New world is saying that there are new opportunities that are waiting for you that can help you heal and move away from this situation or this toxic person or even these toxic patterns that you are caught up in within yourself about the, the past with this person. I feel like for very few of you, this person apologized and it's still very hard for you to to really forgive them, which is understandable. But this new world card is saying you have to have courage and love to move forward in something that it is that you're trying to to do. I feel like some of you are trying to level up, to move on to the next level in your life, but you're going to have to let go of people, places, and things. Internally and externally. This water chalice, I feel again, is saying like, really delve deeper into yourself to find the root of those scars and to show yourself the love that you needed in order to heal it. But you have to have the courage to do the shadow work. You have to have the courage to face your scars and it's going to hurt, it's going to be scary, it's going to trigger you, but when you show yourself love through replaying those memories and you're, you're giving yourself the love, you're holding yourself, and you're endeared to yourself, it will help you. let your emotions flow if you need to be alone while you do this then be alone if you need to write it down then write it down if you want to do this while you're in the shower then do it while you're in the shower if you have a partner and you want to open up then open up if you have a best friend then open up whatever it is that helps you feel safe but also have courage in trying to move away from the box that you were placed in. That box where you have learned to be fearful, independent through fear, not independent through courage and, and self-love, independent because of the scars and the pain. There's new opportunities. If you really want to take the opportunity, then be open to it. But you have to be ready for it. I just started shuffling and a couple cards, a few
few cards came out but i'm going to i'll go ahead and show you maybe they're a confirmation for somebody but i'm going to shuffle them back in we have the elk we have the earthworm and we have the dragonfly so we have earth and air elements which is making me think again of that balance earth is seen as a feminine energy and air is seen as a masculine energy so again bringing balance into your everyday life internally and externally earth being in this plane of existence and air being within the mind Hmm. you had like a big group of cards come out I'm just going to show you the lion which immediately when I saw that I heard courage have courage dolphin there's a lot of cards be patient and kind with yourself be playful with yourself. Okay. So interesting. Okay. So the elk, the earthworm, and those came out again. I saw 32, 13. We had tarantula. And we had golden egg that came specifically in reverse. This is a spirit card. Golden egg. Make me think back to that baby dragon. And underneath we have camel. So with the camel here, I'm getting this energy of it is important to have endurance, to build endurance towards what it is that you desire. This elk again is making me think of a very masculine energy. Be strong but graceful. And strength does not mean to withhold your emotions or to be emotionless. There is strength in expressing your emotions in healthy balanced ways the earthworm for some for some reason i'm thinking of resourcefulness but i'm also thinking about cycles dig deeper into what is buried within you because there are messages there for you that will help you decipher what it is that you're trying to do in your life Your spirit guides are trying to help you release vicious cycles that you may be caught up in. It's time to end it. With this tarantula, I was thinking about when there's some of them that like hide they kind of like bury themselves and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let me see. I'm going to read the book on this card. Okay, so, oh, I was flipping through and it like stopped on this one. Get this. I'm just going to read this first part or maybe I should read it all because this is what we were talking about. It says stable, resilient, headstrong, the father. I just saw 3555. The great elk represents the earth element in its masculine form. This means it provides underlying support and stability amidst life's many changes. Interesting because fives symbolize change. An elk personality, whether male or female, is fully established in themselves and knows their core values. They become known and respected for acting in ways that uphold those values. Sometimes the elk's ego can become inflated but for the most part, they make damn good fathers, mothers, lovers, and friends. The world needs more elk energy. When in balance, supportive, kind, and consistent. When out of balance, pretentious, high, and mighty. To bring into balance, eat and drink more consciously. So the earthworm. Shy, hesitant, reluctant, to share inner vision interesting we have all felt those woes of the earthworm at some point along the way the earthworm indicates a newbie or novice working to establish confidence in a new field others around you may seem wise and experienced but it's important to remember they once felt earthworm energy too this card is a reminder not to be intimidated or lose hope. Mastery takes time, and you're on the right track. Besides, rumor has it, a beginner's mind offers the most valuable insights. When in balance, earnest, intelligent, valuable. When out of balance, self-conscious, apprehensive. To bring into balance, speak up, risk, embarrassment. Let's see this trench Tarantula at a crossroad calming life's purpose, claiming life's purpose. The tarantula represents the moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is sidetracking side you from your dream, yet a voice inside keeps begging you to refocus your attention. In order to find true happiness, you must choose Dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. The tarantula hovers patient and calm like an old friend that knows your inner soul. It already knows you'll choose wisely. When in balance follows intuition, when out of balance hesitates over intellectualizes to bring to balance daily journaling. And now I'm going to read the golden egg. There's not many spirit cards. the golden egg and it was in reverse message at the center of the heart the unstruck sound within the golden egg lives a precious sound deep within that sound resides a message the sound cannot be heard nor the message discerned until we retreat from the noise of modern day life 
The magical essence of the golden egg needs warmth, quiet, and time to unfold. No rushing, pushing, or grasping. Find a place of deep and restful ease, perhaps through yoga, nidra, or meditation. If you do not yet have a meditation practice, take some time for introspection or contemplation. When the mind begins to settle and the breath is calm, ask the question that weighs heaviest on your heart. Staying open to any response you hear. Engaging with the energy of the golden egg is an advanced practice. It requires becoming intimate with our very essence and comfortable with vulnerability. When a feeling of tenderness or gratitude arises from deep within you, know that you are well on your way. Your chest may swell like you are seeing an old friend that has been away for a long, long time. Listen to the message they've been waiting to tell you. The golden egg, the fourth chakra. The the subtle essence of the golden egg is nestled deep within the heart center at the the fourth chakra, the chakra called uh, uh, Anahata is the home of the self or soul. By bringing the mind into the center, we discover a portal to the most intimate and luminous space. It is said Our inner guide sits there in deep meditation waiting for us. Anahata translates to the unstruck sound. Wow. That's beautiful. And then it shows this like little picture. (laughs) Message from the center of the heart with it being in reverse I know that was long and winded I'm sorry but with it being in reverse I feel like there are messages that you have been hearing whether this reading or yourself a lot of times within yourself certain times that you may be upset or going through something and then you get a guidance like a message of guidance within you and you doubt it you don't listen to it you don't nurture it if you have certain goals dreams and aspirations I feel like there's certain aspects of yourself holding yourself back that you're not nurturing it gold making me think of the lower chakras the solar plexus chakra the sacral chakra making me think of creation creativity whatever it is that you're trying to establish or trying to grow you need to be patient and you need to be diligent and you need to give yourself the time and the space to accept that it is a possibility and to work towards that I'm going to go ahead and pull one more dragon card. Oh, Oh, we have, I'm just going to show you gratitude and gifts. So I feel like don't be afraid to gift yourself. Don't be afraid to hold gratitude when people gift you things. We have path. We have decision. Air chalice. And nutrition. So interesting because one of these um, animal cards, I think it was the golden egg, was it? It was the earthworm mention about nutrition eating healthier so 
So if you've been considering eating healthier or cutting something specific out of your diet or anything like that, then this is a confirmation for you. You need to make a decision to devote your time, your energy towards your path. And you need to show yourself the love that you are looking for. Both of these dragons are the color of the heart chakra. Green is the main color of the heart chakra, but pink is also known as the color of the heart chakra. We have the air chalice. The air chalice, air and tarot are represented as swords. And as I mentioned, swords represent communication, action, thoughts. You need to move away from the past. I saw 4554, by the way. With New World and Air Chalice, this is saying it's going to take a lot of mental reframing and reprogramming for you to overcome the past to heal it not to just brush it off or hide it under the rug or act like it never happened it happened what has it taught you and I felt like immediately after I said that there were a lot of people like what the fuck like, what the fuck are you expecting that to teach me I didn't deserve that and this and that I'm not saying that you did. What I'm saying is, I'm pretty sure it taught you to stay away from people that exude that kind of energy in relationships or friendships or in work environments. You're able to spot certain things because you have already experienced so much. Take action towards creating new neural pathways, new opportunities, new cycles, new habits. Have the courage to heal your scars. Some people don't realize this, but usually the people that experience the worst, if they learn to heal it, are able to help others heal it too. There are people who are counselors who have experienced maybe an upbringing of the parents with alcoholism and abuse and they become like a social worker that focuses on drug and alcohol abuse or something. Many people on the other side, they might be like, well, how do you know? What the fuck do you know? Just because you went to school and such. But then these people don't realize who they're talking to is a person who has probably experienced some really bad shit themselves. And that's probably why they were so inspired to do what they do. Some of the most successful people have experienced the worst. The difference is that they didn't let it stop them. They let it, they learned from it what they could and they moved past it and they just kept going. With or without permission, they followed their heart people, places, and things fall away, and they keep striving towards what it is that they love. As long as you're not harming, as long as you're not harming yourself or anybody else, then what can they do? If you feel stuck where you're at, then this may be a confirmation for you to, to find a new situation 
to move away from where you're currently at. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull a card from this deck. I don't remember what this deck was called, but I have the information of all the decks that I used down in the description box. Hmm. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> Can I got chills? Healing and forgiveness. I allow myself to feel so I can properly heal. Healing and forgiveness. For you to heal, you must first acknowledge your pain. This is exactly what we're talking about. This is perfect. Oh, I am fully present in my now, knowing that the past is gone and the future is an illusion. Peace and joy, let go of the thought that things should be any different than they are at this moment. I don't, this isn't saying like if you're experiencing some bad shit for you to just keep living in it, that's not the point. I feel like this is more saying like once you are healing and you're working through that, things are going to come back up. This is just saying, don't regret things. Don't think, what if I could change this or that? Just heal. Let go of the thought that things should be different than they are at this moment. Every scar tells a tale. Think because of what you have gone through, you are able to help people who are going through or have also gone through the same. You have this deeper understanding than a lot of other people do or ever will because of what you've gone through. That doesn't mean that's okay. It doesn't mean it should happen. No, of course not. But it already happened. I allow myself to feel so I can properly heal. There is no human who knows me better than I know myself. I do not look outwardly for answers that exist within. This is exactly like the shadow work that I was mentioning. Freedom and direction. There will be many well-meaning people wanting to control the way in which you do life. I am immune to criticism and unfearful of change. It is okay if you do not fit in. You can grow, glow, and go simultaneously. I dedicate my time and energy to the people who accept and love me. Freedom and direction. If someone does not appreciate you for who you are, it is not your job to make them do so. Go ahead and pull one more. I enjoy life's journey without trying to figure it all out. You are not a problem that needs to be solved. I 
I deserve and receive the love that I am willing to give everyone else. Love and connection. Just as you are looking for love, love is looking for you. I just heard, like, treat others how you want to be treated. You don't want people to treat you like shit. Don't treat people like shit. You don't want people to push you away. Don't push the people you love the most away. You want people to be open and honest with you? Then be open and honest with people that you love. I believe their actions prove their love. I am safe. Remind yourself that it is okay to be vulnerable knowing you are protected. When you find those who love you and who protect you, be grateful and don't take it for granted. Remind yourself it's okay to be in this place where you can let your walls down, let your guard down. If it's somebody that you really love, then open up. Share more about your experiences. If you want them to understand who you are and where you come from, then how can they if they don't understand who you are because they don't know where you come from? I am ever-changing. I am an ever-changing spirit with the ability to change beliefs and options, opinions, as freely as I choose. Freedom and direction. You do not need consent to change your mind. Everyone does not deserve the right to speak into my life, being and unbecoming. You should not allow yourself to be guilted into doing anything. Guilt is not a loving form of motivation. I'll read that again. Everyone does not deserve the right to speak into my life. You should not allow yourself to be guilted into doing anything. Guilt is not a loving form of motivation. I accept my truth and my own story. Some of your story is messy, but this does not make you a mess. I think we'll end. I just saw 57, 57. I think we'll end there. Actually. I respect and love myself by re res resting my mind, body, and soul regularly. Being busy all the time does not mean you are being productive. Rest is an important part of progress. All right. I live boldly without seeking permission to do so. Okay. So I hope that this message resonated. Um, like I hope that it brought you some clarity onto your situation I would never wish that energy on anyone it's really difficult to say the very least but believe in yourself that you can get through it and you will be there for yourself be the love that you seek it's like that quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. Be the love that you wish to experience. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know it was a really long one. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I had a long day at work. But I wish you guys the very best. If you're interested in a private reading, Please feel free to contact me. I am available. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.